Welcome back to my channel everybody. I am doing quite an on topic video for you this week. So I am going to show you how to make a mask and there are hundreds if not thousands of how to make a face covering video on YouTube. But what's different about this one is I am going to show you how to make a mask and how to better make it fit your face. So just like a bra, one size does not fit all and that is just something I've noticed when it comes to masks just something I kind of observed in work and I honestly think more people would wear them if they could make them fit their face a bit better and that is what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to make this pleated style face covering. This face covering is suitable just for going to the shops, getting on public transport and doing like your groceries. It's not medical grade and it's not intended to be. It's also not suitable if you're doing like woodworking and DIY. I do recommend recommend having a proper respirator for projects so this is simply just for wearing on the buses, doing your grocery shopping, places where you cannot social distance and that's what I'm going to show you how to make. You can also hand sew these and the great thing about them is you pop them in the wash and you don't have to be using the disposable ones. I'm going to get straight into the video and the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you about measurements. So I have made three different sizes. I have made a tiny size that is child friendly and I have made a small slash women's size and I'll talk to you about that now and then I have a larger one that is suitable I would say the measurements for a man's face or a larger woman's face. So during the week I stitched some masks with my friend and her niece and she tested out the smaller size and that was a perfect fit for a child's face and then both me and Rachel made the eight inches by five inches and I had this down as like a child size but as we made them it was a better fit for our faces and then the larger size we made and that was actually too big for Rachel's face and we gave it to her brother and we realized that that size would be better for men. So here is a mask, This I stole this from work, sorry. And it looks like it's a surgical mask but it's not. Um, we got boxes of these in, don't worry, I don't have to have a surgical mask in work. I am not a nurse or anything like that but these look like they are medical kind of masks, but they're actually not. And it's quite like thin fabric, but as you can see, when I put it on my face, it's super big on my face. Even when I press this down, it's like really big. It's quite gappy. Um, I don't know if you can see. I have lots of room in it. It's kind of uncomfortable. So this is like just your generic face covering. And then when I put on one that I have made that fits my face better. This one fits way more snug. This is more snug. It's tighter to my face, but I can still breathe. And this is one that has been measured to my face. So let's talk measurements. So get a piece of paper. This is card, I do recommend paper because it's easier to kind of fold. You can also test it out on a scrap piece of fabric. And what you can do is you can just measure it to your face. Now, this includes the seam allowance. You're gonna have a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you have a larger face, you can do nine inches across by six inches down. And you are going to be adding pleats, so that's going to bring it down. So what you can do is you can actually fold in pleats. Now I can't do it because it's a piece of card, but Get a piece of paper and you can fold it to add some pleats, put it up to your face, have a look in the mirror and I should have probably pleated this. Hang on, I've one here with some pleats. So for example, if this was a scrap piece of fabric or a piece of paper, you can kind of test it to your face. So make a template first and this tip goes for whatever mask you're making. So if you want to make the other kind of C shape masks, but maybe you have purchased one and it's too big, why not trace the template of it and make a new one and just adjust it to your size. So to summarize, make yourself a paper template or you can use scrap fabric. I recommend if you are a lady, smaller face to do eight inches across and five inches down. If you are a man or um, you have a larger face, do nine inches 
by six inches down and make a template before you commit to making a mask. I just want to talk about elastic as well. I have actually been recycling the elastics off these disposable masks because they wash really well, the elastics. Now do not re-wear or reuse a disposable mask. They are designed to be disposable and they're not designed to be washed. However, I have been stealing the little elastics off them and as you can see I have reused them in the masks that I have made. So I made a batch of these masks to give to friends and my mum and I'm going to throw them into the washing machine and the elastics wash really well. Elastic can be a bit hard to get at the moment. I did go to my local hickeys and I was able to get some elastic but I recommend this thin shoelace almost elastic the other stuff is quite thick and you can also measure this to your ear as well to see how much elastic you're going to need you don't you want to have a snug too tight and it's going to hurt your ear too loose and your mask is going to slip off so just get your piece of elastic and just see how much you roughly need so once you have your measurements that you're happy with and your elastic you are going to make your mask and I just want to talk about fabric before you make your mask. So obviously 100% breathable cotton is the best. I have been looking at people wearing handmade masks and I'm noticing that some people are using really thick fabric and um, almost like curtain fabric. So upholstery fabric and obviously that's going to be really hard to breathe with. So recycle fabric, like some of you might remember this piece of fabric. This is an old Kath Kitson skirt that I recycled last year into little pouches. I'll put a link to that video, but I had a scrap of it left. It's 100% cotton, so I just made myself a little matching mask. I also have some cotton fabric here as well. And cotton, you can wash it on 60 degrees. That's what they recommend for face coverings. Yeah, it irons well and it's a bit more breathable. So if you have bought a handmade mask and you feel like the fabric is quite thick, it may be because they use something that was a bit thicker. I know like I encourage you to use your scrap fabrics and everything, but if you are uncomfortable with a mask, do go with the lighter kind of cotton fabric. So let's make a mask and I'm going to show you how to assemble this. You can also hand sew it. So instead where I'm using the machine, you can just do a straight stitch with your hand. It's going to take a bit longer, but you can hand sew these. So let's get into it. Once you have your paper template made, you're going to cut out two pieces of fabric, a front piece and a back piece in that size. You're going to add your two pieces of elastic to the four corners. You're going to make a sandwich with the two right sides of fabric facing each other with the elastics pinned in in the corner. You are going to stitch all the way around this but you are going to leave a gap so that you can pull it through. Make sure to do a reverse stitch when you start and when you finish and leave the gap because if you don't leave a gap you won't be able to pull it inside out. Once you pull your fabric right way out, you're going to give it an iron and you're going to iron in your pleats. I find three pleats is perfect for this size. You can do more or you can do less, but the more you do, the more kind of fitted shape it's going to have. So I recommend three pleats. You're going to pin them in place and then you're going to take your mask to the machine and you're going to do a top stitch all the way around and this will close off the opening that we had.
Well, you can get creative with your masks and you could probably match your fabric to your outfit. I mean, it's 2020. Had you have said at the start of the year, I'd have been matching my outfits, my face mask, but have fun with it. So in Ireland, the uptake on wearing masks, it has become mandatory on the bus. I think it was actually made law on Monday to wear face covering on the bus. And then in the likes of shopping centers and groceries, it's not mandatory, but it's like recommended. So I am noticing more and more people wearing their masks, which is great. And I wanted to make this video so you could make something that is a bit more comfortable and would hopefully encourage you to wear one. But with that being said, I know there's a lot of kind of COVID shaming and every week it's something people are being shamed for going to the park, queuing for the B&Q, queuing for Ikea, going to the hairdresser, going to the pub, not wearing a mask, wearing a mask. And all I ask is for a bit of encouragement so instead of shaming people into wearing a mask why not encourage each other so my way of encouraging people is making this video and i have made masks for my friends so i'm hoping i don't know if we all have some matching masks it'll encourage us to kind of wear them empathy and encouragement over shame because 2020 we've had enough of that <laughs> So let me know if you're going to make one. I'm gonna to link to the original video where I saw this particular type of mask being made and it's with Wendy's sewing channel. I absolutely love that girl's channel. And that's where I, re I originally seen this and got the tutorial for this style of mask. So I'll pop a link to that in the description box where you can go check it out. She also made two other styles of masks as well. So you can go and check that out. So happy mask making. Obviously it goes without saying, if you don't have a mask, just keep a social distance. Um, I know my mother, she will not wear a mask where her argument is, I just avoid people. So <laughs> I see her point of view. <laughs> So do tag me if you do make a mask. You can tag me over on Instagram. I love seeing what you're making. You can use the hashtag doing a dainty where I can keep on top of your DIYs. So that is me for this week. Cheat thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.